Hello, Libras. Welcome to Rising Sign Messages, or welcome back to Rising Sign Messages. So, Libra, we are going to be talking about the full moon in Virgo, which falls in your 12th house. And you, when I was tapping into your guys' energy, I just kept seeing the scales of justice. And I kept thinking about how Libra is defined as, or, you know, stereotyped as the peacemaker. You're, it, even this card right here says that you're diplomatic, the harmony, balance. That, that's the energy that represents Libra. I think the problem with it is, is that there is an energy of depersonalization that I don't normally feel with Libra and energy, but right now I do. And that can happen when you are dealing with energy that is in your 12th house. And because this is, you know, future projected, even though you might watch this prior to the full moon, this is still centering on what you need to work through or be aware of during that phase. And it might not necessarily be in the 12th house, but what is being illuminated in the 12th house It's shining other places. It's shining. I'm seeing like from the mummy where they use these big uh, metal mirrors to catch the sunlight and reflect it underground. That feels like what the moon is doing, but it has a kind of like hazy glow to it. So there's a distortion that I'm feeling. Something that has been distorted. And it feels like it's been distorted for a while. It might be um, perception, thought form, or thought processes, um, you know, a... I just heard singular form. It's like a type of speech. A singular form. That was sculpted, but you were never the sculptor. But did you realize you weren't the sculptor? This is going very abstract. This explains, however, why I kept picking up the energy of the scales, because they're very impersonal. And as much as you can make a sculpture that, <laughs> I don't know, embodies a person, um, that, you know, is of another person, it is a, like, a likeness of a person. You can create something that is a likeness. You can't make the creation that is the likeness exact. It's a singular form for for limitlessness, truth, and internal energy, internal form, like. Okay, take this if it resonates, but please know that this is the best that I have as far as a metaphor and it's what I'm being shown. Say, for instance, you're in a relationship and you and this person, you love each other, but for whatever reason, it doesn't work out. You two go your separate ways, you go about your lives, um, and at some point you find out that this person has passed. They they died. They they you know crossed over. There can be a moment where you want to connect to that person, but when playing with the twelfth house energy, it's important to remember that. Connections 
in the spiritual world to the physical world, while we may be able to get whispers of it, glimpses, peaks, in some extreme cases, you know, physical object manifestation, so physical objects moving. And, you know, I haven't personally experienced that, but I know someone who has. Um, that's all we get. And it's, there's an energy here of, it could be a belief that you can recreate. And it may not be a person, but a circumstance, a situation, something, something that was fell. And there is an attempt to recreate what was by doing the same things. Now it's shifted to more like work. So, or creativity. So like I said, take it if it resonates, but this is an energy here that it feels like the energy itself wants to flow, but there's a struggle within the energy to get to you. And this energy may feel exterior to you, but when we're working with the 12th house, it's never, it's, it's always internal. It's our internal connection to ourself, to our higher self, to the divine, to our divine creator, and to the origin point of all. So it essentially is where we connect to the collective. But a disconnect from the self in any way, shape, or form means that the connection to the collective is always going to be faulty. I just heard the word tampered with. Um, Jimmy Richt, it's kind of like, so I've got my microphone here and um, the cord of my microphone. I have <clears throat> this electrical tape around it. It's not perfect. It's not ideal. I'm going to have to replace my microphone because my cat was chewing on the cord. But it is Jimmy rigged in order to still function for what I need it for in the present moment. When something falls, trying to recreate what was creates a resistance. It creates a wall. It creates a push off to what wants to come in. So any change or adaption gets halted or slowed because this thing isn't truly being let go of. I'll give you a for instance, and then I'm going to roll the dice. And we're going to get further. I have the feeling your message is going to be kind of long. So bear with me, guys. When I finished the retrograde guidebooks of 2022, my brain went immediately to the books for 2023. And I was like, I have all this time. I'll get all the prep work done. This is going to be great. I know how everything flows this time. And I took a break. And the longer I took a break, the more I did not have that spark, that inspiration to do it the way that I did in 2022. And I wanted it like a tangible force. I wanted it. I, I wanted that inspiration. I, I wanted back in the writing flow. Um, and I tried to force it. I did research. I found new things, new pieces of the puzzle. But as soon as I sat down to try and write, it was gone. Everything was gone. There was no magic left. After everything that happened at the end of December and throughout the month of, of January and into February, I had to realize that I was trying to recreate something from 2022. It was a magical thing that I did in 2022. The amount of books I wrote, the amount of channeling I was doing, it was a lot. It, it was a lot. It was a lot on my body, on my mind, on my energy, everything, on my family. It was a lot. It was a huge accomplishment, a huge success. But I was trying to recreate it and I was planning on recreating it every year. And I, I just chose not to. I, 
had a talk with spirit and I said, the idea, the inspiration behind it is beautiful. The purpose for helping the collective work with the energies, it's a beautiful, beautiful purpose and intention, but I can't do it all. And I am choosing to follow a new path wherever it may lead me right now and say, I release this creative project. And if it is meant to be picked up, it will either come back to me in a new form or it will find somebody else because that's the beauty of creativity. When spirit wants it in the world, it will be in the world. If this is a person, I know the struggle, I know the pain, I know the anguish of wanting, wanting that hug, wanting that tactile interaction. But it was not meant to be in this life and recreating it, whether you're doing it in, I'm seeing, okay, trigger warning. I was seeing visions of a seance, whether you're doing it by trying to play with energies and powers and whatnot, or whether you're trying to identify those qualities within another person. Spirit wants you to think about how true you're being to yourself. You're the embodiment of the scales. Are you being balanced and fair in the situation? And I can't answer that for you. I can just, I'm just the messenger to bring the questions. So let's get the focal energy. We know that the full moon in Virgo is in your 12th house. And um, with that, it can give you a kind of pragmatic, analytical um, approach to shadow work and to connecting to spirit, like, okay, this book says I should do this and this and this step. And you might employ that because when you're tapping into that 12th house energy, that that's the mindset and the energy that you get into. Um, but because Virgo is a mutable sign, it's about changing those foundations to a structural flow that works for you. That's also another message for someone. Okay, so we have Mars in the fifth house. Ooh, buddy, that would be Mars in Aquarius for you. And that is, <laughs> um, I just heard um, you've lost that loving feeling. Um, the fifth house is the house of romance, but I always think about it as the house of creative self-expression and the house of the inner child. It is connected to having children um and and your childhood but i always think of it like how does your inner child come out and this could manifest in a couple of ways it could manifest in um a fixed mindset that either triggers you into action that is very ambitious very determined action um in some sort of creative endeavor or in some sort of romantic connection But it's pouring into others instead of thinking about what your actual motivation and determination factors are. Are you motivated by the fact that this person wants this from you and this person? It's like this person reminds you of something. And so you want to please this person because they remind you of something. Or this thing reminds you of this other thing. And so you want to build it and grow it and, and keep it in your life and, and cling to it with that fixed air energy instead of balancing it. Your divine masculine needs expression. You need some sort of expression. There's anger, like I feel this kind of simmering anger and it's not, I'm not, 
making a judgment or anything. It's, it's the emotion that it feels. It's like frustration. Like why, why can't I, why can't this, why? And the only person that can answer those questions is you. This is your journey. It's your rodeo. It's your story. You're the author and you're penning it. So what do we want to talk about spirit? Okay. Remember when I said that the moon is going to be illuminating something within your chart? It's illuminating how you approach this fifth house energy. How do you approach expressing yourself? How do you approach romance? How do you approach your inner child? So we're going to do um, self-expression, romance, and inner child and find out what this moon is illuminating on how you use that divine masculine to meet the world in these areas. So can we get um, creative self-expression? How does Libra Risings use their divine masculine to creatively express themselves? Can we get just one card, please? Thank you. And can we get one for how they... Um, Utilize their divine masculine in a romantic way, in romantic partnerships, in love partnerships, having fun. Thank you. And finally, how do they use their inner child to come forth? Thank you. Okay. We have three of cups on the back. Um, no, this is not a third party situation. This is about different aspects of yourself, different personas, different parts of who you are. The three of cups represents these three. These are three parts of you that are being called to kind of, I just heard get along. So these parts are being called to get along. So let's find out. The first one we have, uh, your creative self-expression. So we have the Ace of Cups. I mean, that makes you a true romantic at heart. But are you are you forcing this cup in someone's face? And the cup has a lotus flower on it. So what if the person is allergic to lotus flowers? Then, then you're throwing something in their face and they're going to sneeze and then the cup is going to get shaken. So the question that you need to ask yourself when you're creatively expressing yourself and you are thinking about all these new endeavors and these new things and you want to offer this to someone or to the world or whatever, how are you doing it? Because a lotus flower in a cup is a transplant, essentially, because a lotus blossoms out of mud, not out of water. So you've taken it out of where it came from to put it in something that is more palatable. But is it true? Is it true? That's your question. Right, let's see romance. We have the king of pentacles. And remember how I said this is Aquarius energy and it's that fixed energy. Look how tightly he's holding on to that pentacle. And he's using his He's using like a wand or a stick or something to like, I don't know. Is he fishing in the tree? He's sitting at a crossroads. So on a romance level or a romantic level, it's like I'm perfectly comfortable sitting in between what was and what could be because I know at least here it's safe. And here I have power. Here I, I have the authority. But he has a wooden throne. If you think about what um, authority is, when we have Mars energy, then we have Aries energy, and then we have the emperor. And the emperor traditionally is sitting on a stone throne. His, his throne is built of granite or marble or what have you. Wood will over time decay. 
It takes a lot more for the stone to. It will, but it takes a lot more. Not to mention the fact that it's literally like you're you're hindering yourself. <laughs> look, look right up here. You see this open door? Okay. What's beyond the door? What's beyond the door? Why are you holding yourself back from going through the door? What if, what if you were seen as the emperor when you walked through the door? And are you approaching romance and, and you know, this playful interactive energy um, in sexual relationships or, you know, dating or anything? Are you approaching it with an air of, I get kind of like a high, like um, the stereotype of um, like the Upper East Side where they think everybody is just like kind of frigid and the men are very hoity-toity. Hollywood, that's the best I got. But that's kind of the energy I have where you're just very um, direct and cold because you're nurturing things in your life that you want to nurture. And this is not necessarily an area that you wish to nurture. I have to read it how I read it. All right. So your inner child, the fool. And here we have the problem. They want these three parts of you to get along, but these three parts are very, very different energies. They're incredibly different energies. And I can see in this fool card in particular, your inner child is like staring at what has fallen away. We've got the the feather and the rose down on the bottom, staring at what has fallen away, but not jumping after it. And normally the fool is leaping, but maybe this isn't the right clip. And so your inner child wants you to stop staring at what has fallen. Because look how much there is to explore and other, other cliffs to go on. All right. What can Libra do moving forward? Venus, beauty, artistry, and love. This is your ruler. That's the point. <laughs> I could start, that's the point. I'm ruled by Venus. I am very emotional. Right, but we're talking about your Mars energy right now. And the depths of your psyche that is impacting how you come forth and meet the world, which is what Mars represents. And then we have solar eclipse, creation, intention, and potential. So this is about the intention that you have behind your creations. Now, what is the what is the combination between these two? Jeez. We have the new moon with creation, intention, and potential. So when you blend these energies together, you're going to rediscover what it's like to begin a new creation. That that rush, that joy, that Oh, that like, I can't wait to show you. I can't wait for the world to see that, that ineffable feeling like you're tingling throughout your whole entire body because you're just so excited for what you've created. And you know that it's beautiful and it's this innocent beauty and feeling because you see it for the perfection that it is. You see it for the creation, the co-creation that you had with spirit. But when you can't get along and you're pushing and pushing and pushing in the areas that aren't, they're just not cohesive to you anymore. You're meant to grow like a butterfly. I literally just heard throw down the scales and walk away. Sometimes justice, sometimes justice, you, there's a saying, sometimes justice turns a blind eye and usually it's bad, but in this case, it feels like that's what you're supposed to do is be blinded, just heard blinded by the night, by the, uh, blinded by the light, but I heard blinded by the night, blinded by the night. Hmm. Yeah. Release, release the old and welcome in 
your abundant new beginning. What would you do if you couldn't fail? What would you do if you were 100% protected by the universe and by spirit? If you knew that undoubtedly you would be a success in whatever it is that you want to do, would you continue trying to recreate what has already fallen away or would you leap? Would you leap? Would you continue staying in between the two doors or would you walk through the new path? Take that new journey. Would you remove the lotus from the wonder that it is growing out of the mud so that you can make something that you think others are going to find pretty and amazing? Or would you see it for the beauty that it is in and of itself and then understand that that was spirit's gift to you to reflect to you what you contain within yourself? This moon phase is illuminating all of this as a potential for you. It's all potential. It's like unmolded clay. This time you get to be the sculptor. So what comes to light when you surrender and allow it to come in, what comes to light will show you what needs to be released. When it's released, let spirit guide you. Let spirit show you, show you the beauty of bringing these pieces together and finding cohesion internally and finding the truth of how beautiful and amazing and creative you are so that moving forward, you're not being diplomatic in a way that sacrifices you because you're trying to recreate something that felt good in the moment. But it was one moment and that moment is past. And you have this moment now and you can create an even better feeling, an even better experience, an even better form of expression moving forward. And it is so protected. <laughs> Come hell or high water, it will be protected. Wow. Okay. Libra, this is what I have for you. I really hope this helps. <laughs> I'm really, I just would love some feedback because this is so out of my realm um, as far as, you know, like relationally, um, I had to really, really rely on spirit on this one. So I would love to get your feedback. So please make sure you guys comment, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, and thanks for hanging out, guys. It's been, it's been fun. It's been definitely a new experience for me. So I appreciate that. All right, Libras. I love you guys. I will see you at my next reading. Bye.